Hello, hello, hello. I am excited. You know, before I even do anything, I need you to join your hands and thank the children, the students of this faculty. They, they are amazing. The volunteers. And I think, parents, you should be proud. You are raising gentlemen. We don't have gentlemen these days anymore. But the kids I've seen here, I'm sorry I call you kids, the students I've seen here, they are amazing. They meet you, hello, how are you? They are so different. And I am so proud to be part of it. Thank you so much. Volunteer, you rock. I am excited. As you can tell, I'm the only person in these 10 speakers with a different accent. That makes me... And you have to pay attention because this accent is different and strong and powerful, but I, I guarantee you would hear everything. My name is Penny Leon. I was born in Uganda, East Africa. Yay, my Uganda! With seven siblings and 13 more kids that my mother raised. I was told at a young age that, by my mother, my father, that girls should not go to school. And guess what? Be careful what you say no to God, he gives it you double. We had all girls, seven girls, and my mother was like, my father was like, I can't take this no more, no school. My mother made it a mission for us to go to school, all of us. And he said, over my dead body, these kids are going to school. So I was taken to Kenya at a young age to go to school because I, my, my father wanted to marry me off. And by the way, there is a man waiting for me there, good luck. After all these years, they think I'm coming. But my mother made it a mission. Mothers, you students love your mother. They rock. They are the best thing that could happen. When a mother puts something on, the, on their head, they can do it. My mother was a third grade student uh, uh, education. You can imagine. Never went to school. But my father, who went to school, didn't even know part of education. So my, fa my mother sent me away to go to school. I went to Kenya so that I can finish. After Kenya, I went to uh, UK. After UK, America, because I knew what I wanted to do. The dream was big. I couldn't do it in Africa. I would either go back, get married, have children, barefoot, pregnant. I would have like 15 by now. But I said, no. I came, but before I went, I, I've, I've gone ahead of myself. Before I went there, I I, I raised, I saw I was in school and in, in a church like this. And I saw a young girl coming in a church and I said, Mom, look at this girl. She has school uniform and it's dirty and she has no, no shoes. And my mother said she's an orphan. I said, What is an orphan? I didn't know what an orphan is. I was nine years old. I said, An orphan is someone who doesn't have parents. I said, What happened to the parents? I was vocal all my childhood. I want to know. My mother said, shh, we are in service. After that, I will tell you. I said, no, tell me what's an orphan. So after that, and it cut the story short, I took that girl home. I gave her the clothes. I gave her the shoes. And that day, something triggered my heart that I want to be the mother of the motherless, of the children, mother of the motherless. I didn't know what that means. After like two, after like three, three weeks after that girl left, I told my mother, I say, you know, when I grow up like you, I want to be a mother. I will not have children of my own. My mother looked at me, you're an African woman. You have to have children. That's our culture. I said, good luck, not this woman. I said, I want to be a mother of the motherless. She said, okay, you are nine years. What do you know? You tell me when you're 20. Right now, just she ignored it. But I want to tell you that at 15 years old, I adopted my first girl. I was a kid myself. I was doing, uh, uh, going to school and babysitting and doing my office work and cleaning up, doing fire so I can have money. So I went to school, the principal, I said, this money is for this girl, I want to go to school. She said, where did you get the money? I said, don't tell my parents. This is money, go to school, this girl has to go to school. Anyway, to cut the story short, it never stopped. I have five girls that I have adopted and three of them have graduated university. And two are in high school. Then when I came to America, you know, it's a different world, but I said, I'm going. These are the three girls, by the way. I didn't even know you have them on screen. Those are my three girls. So when I came to America, I opened an organization. 
that I was compelled to name it after my mother. You have to honor your mother. You have to honor somebody who really gets you that dream going. There are things that I want to speak to you today that three Ds, and that is decision, determination, and destiny. And I never, I ran with, from Africa with those two, three, and I still have them. Once you have the drive, you have the decision, and every decision that you make in life determines your destination. I was on a mission since I left Africa that I'm going to be a mother to the motherless. Right now, as we speak, I have over 13, 1,500 kids that I take care of, all orphans. And that's my organization does it. So, because the decision I made from the beginning determined. These are the ones. I give them water wells. I give them school education, free education. I, I have done medical teams. I take medical teams to Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda. And I, I do this because this is what I see. This medical team here, when, this is Rwanda. We had over 17,000 lined up. I was like, I didn't know what to do. They were stepping on me. It was like cows getting water. It was, but the decision of my life that I made has made this 17. One woman, older lady, was like 89 years old. She came to me, she said, I have never seen a doctor. This is my first doctor in 85 years. I was like, what? Even if I can save one grandmother, that is enough for me. The doctor, the, 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 this is here, we are in Kenya. This is, I was the translator, the, the, the protector of the doctors, everything. But the passion you have and the decision and determination, a hundred millions are following you. Whatever you make a mistake, they are hurt. So whatever we make in decision right now, I love my friend. You are lucky you have this girl. She's a bomb in this house. She has the drive. I was watching her video. I said, this is what I want to be. I don't know whether I'm going to be there. Now. I'm too old for now. But I want to tell you that as children, don't let any voice tell you you can't do it. And I'm glad that everybody here was telling you the same thing. Don't do that. Don't, don't listen to them. I, every time I go, I make sure my mother, my father sees the medical team I'm bringing, sees the what I'm doing, I make sure you see that the girl can do it. My girls now, one of them is in India. I have a child that was born with a bladder in my orphanage. We sent her to India. They are able to go and play and go and take care because I empowered them. Those are the girls they were told you have to be barefoot and pregnant. No education. But I made it. And see. So whatever you do in life makes people follow you. And if you make a bad decision, all the generation is basically cast. So for me not to have children in Africa culture, it's like a curse. My mother could not speak to me for two years because I refused to have children. I said, Mom, I love you very much, but I cannot change this. This is God's calling. I, I guess I can speak God since we're in church now. You know, there are places you can't say God. You say God, they, just, they shut you off. But since I'm in church, I'm ex it's exceptional. But, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, you have to be, I learned the hard way because when I came to America, uh, there are things you can't say here, here. I said, come on, this is God. Who doesn't know God? So, but I'm glad that you gave a prize for this. And that's why I came to speak. I have a husband who has supported me 100%. And he, he's right here. And my pastor, we came together. I can't live here without talking about my husband. They might kick me out, so I have, but he can't. But he has been supportive of all my organization, everything I do. So my, my organization is called Florence for Youth in Action. Florence is my mother's name. And she's always in action. She is still adopting kids as we speak. She never gives, she's like 89 years old, still going. And for me, what she has instilled in me, it will never change. So you want to know more about me, go on that website and see what I take medical teams. I, right now, in next month, April, I'm taking a team from San Diego, a whole church, going with me to build a school. So this is what I do. The mission, I started at the, the, the three days I told you. It will never leave until I go down in the ground. Thank you for having me. May God bless you.